nice and tidy edited down video but I have ways for you to make it faster you can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster you can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description and if you're on a desktop you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters and then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for and lastly you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles then the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed the subtitles might help you out all right well I know that it's not a nice little edited video but if you sew with me we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun and now for the live stream happy sewing <music>
It is really interesting that it, there's no vent, it's a straight hem. So you could make a jacket, like an overcoat style thing, if you did maybe like a heavy corduroy or a uh, heavier like boiled wool. So, yes, yeah, I think Norris is doing a really good job of doing some fashion forward things. And then I saw that um, Danny, I don't know his Instagram account, I just know his, Danny is a part of his Instagram account name and his name is Danny, what was that? Um, and he had, he just announced on Instagram today that he has a pair of pants with zip off legs. I think that's a really good style too. Not fashion forward, but I think a lot of like, a lot of guys like that, that kind of do outdoorsy things. So that's where she lives, Rachel. She's always been there. Donnie Q. Thank you, Betsy. God, I was going to say, O, and I was like, it's not an O. So full disclosure. I came to work accidentally in my house shoes, so I'm sitting here barefoot. <laughs> That's why I keep looking down. I'm like, that. what is that feeling? I, it's a piece of paper scraping my leg or something. What is this right here? Oh, my little snap tool. I promise I'm really tidy, but you know, sometimes I'm, I go fast. So put that back. <laughs> you completely missed that she lives there? <laughs> That's hilarious, Rachel. You've been in master zooms with her, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, so I'm sewing two pairs, though. I think that's one thing I'm doing different with the cargo short this week is that I'm going to sew two at the same time. I kind of rethought that last night or the night before when I was like, oh, thread. Thread might be a problem. Unless I do like a contrast thread maybe on this one, I think. So... Yeah, Donnie Q for Nomi Patterns. I actually um, shared it in my stories on Instagram today, Shim, so you can, you can probably find an easy uh, link to it. So, yeah, I think the contrast, right? So maybe what if I, what if I did this one matching? I, I, for, for some reason, in my opinion, contrast thread on canvas, it looks kind of messy. Like denim is one thing because of the twill weave, but you know, canvas has this, you know, it has a plain weave, right? Wait, where's the camera? I can't see, right? So, and I, I don't know why, but unless you sew right perfectly in green, it looks like the stitches look messy, you know? You mostly live in your head. <laughs> um, I don't think the pocket fabric goes perfectly, but I'm determined to use them because they're both maps. This one's a map. And um, where is this? Oh, I think this is France. And then this one is a local bike map, bike trail map here. And he's a cyclist. So I'm gonna use this really old <laughs> cycling fabric that I have and use one, ha one side for this and then the map showing on the the um, inside of the shorts. This one I have enough to do all four pockets. It'll be sideways, but it's a map, right? So, and I think this goes better with this darker rip stop, but this doesn't go great with this, you know? So that's why, and it's really what you'll see when you look inside the shorts, you'll see the map. I don't know, that could work, I guess. I just thought the green might go better with this like olive color. Hey, Terry, how's it going? The green and gray. Yeah, you like this? So maybe stick with this over here. I think this looks really good. That's why it's kind of hard to deny doing this, right? This is a, a rip stop, like a canvas rip stop. Will this be too dark? The way I had it, yeah, I think so too. I think the green like that and like this, I think this looks a little better. I think this looks, this looks better on this than this. So. Oh, okay, Terry. Oh, good thing you got all that out of the way. I waited a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't have d done it differently because I was missing one. My daughter was missing two. <laughs> like, just missing, so <laughs> we could wait a lot while. <laughs> hey, Jackie, how's it going? Cool, all right, so we'll stick to this. I have enough of this canvas to make more than one pair. Look at that. 
If you don't know how I fold fabric, this is a very good indication. Like, so then it just kind of, you know, draws off like this, you know. But you can really see it when it's a nice big stack like this. I got a bunch of this because I want, probably make me some too. I'm trying to remember where I got, I got this one at that um, fabric store in Sacramento Libby took me to, High Fashion Fabrics. It's got the most random assortment of things there. Pretty sure that's where I got this, right? I'm sorry, I'm so terrible. I know where some fabrics I get far from, some I don't, and I'm sorry about that. It's not a secret. I don't care where people know where I buy my fabric. I just don't, I just really don't get attached to knowing that kind of stuff. It's so, it's so bad for me, I know. <laughs> It'd be better if I remembered. I used to get called out in my videos that I wouldn't say, I really wish you would just tell us what you're wearing and where you got it. And I'm like, really? Why would you care about what I'm wearing? <laughs> I'm just naive sometimes. Hi, Malin, how's it going? Um, all right, so that's what we're making. And I made two changes. How long have I had these fabrics? I got them this year. I don't have very old fabrics. I have just a few old fabrics in my stash. Pretty sure. Most of my fabrics are under a year old. There's a few that aren't. And you know how that is. So I'm not gonna come up with any, any unique explanation for it. So, um, let's see, okay, so the, here's the two changes I'm making. One of the things my husband requested was that the pockets are really shallow in these shorts, and there's a reason for that, and we're gonna change that. Um, I also made his one inch smaller in circumference. He has to wear a belt with his, and he'd really like not to have to do that. This, this is a short that has a waist facing, so if you look at the picture, it's not a waistband, it's a waist facing, and the pocket actually goes up into the facing. So it looks like a regular length pocket, but it's because a lot of that pocket goes up into the waist. So this right here, like about this much, right? And the pocket ends right here. So if this is the opening, this is kind of the pocket, it's pretty shallow. So I added two inches to the bottom and I'm just gonna go over that a little bit. Here's a really good example of what I did. So here's the deal with this. Because there's cargo pockets on the side, you can't just lengthen your pocket. Um, like, see how this one, it's flush with the side seam right here. Here's the original bottom edge here. And like, that's the bottom of the opening. So look at how shallow this pocket is. Don't judge it by the overall height, since so much of this is in the waist facing. So um, when you sew this pocket, because of the side cargo pocket, on the shorts, this right here. You don't want your pocket to be stitched into the side seam past this point of the top of the cargo pocket. Otherwise, you'll stitch right through your pocket when you go to top stitch your cargo pocket on. I know all this, I'm saying the word pocket about 50,000 times, but um, if you would like to lengthen your pocket, I highly recommend that you do because it really is a very shallow pocket Make sure you swoop away from the side seam. And then when we go to sew our cargo pocket on, we can just fold this up out of the way, attach our cargo pocket to the side seam, and then we can let this hang loose. And I actually kind of straightened this out a little bit and then made it sort of a blunt, squared off. It's kind of awkward looking, I know. <clears throat> but it's gonna give him a little bit more security for the contents of his pocket. Um, when I pull my new fabric off the line, I stand there and do the stand reflex. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Am I using zipper by the yard? No, I don't use zipper by the yard for these. Oh my gosh, do I have zipper? Holy moly. I did not even check that. Let's check. Because this one takes a little bit longer. From my experience though, there's only one zipper length. Oh, five inch, okay. Let's see. I've got a lot of brass zippers. I don't use um, zipper by yard for brass zippers. Most stuff just usually have night, exactly. 
<laughs> right, Diane? I know. There, I have, I've been shamed for my fabric stash, but um, I feel like I sewed a lot more than that person and they should have just kept their mouths shut. <laughs> There's my blunt reason <laughs> reply to that. Um, these are not, I made this mistake last year. I put these in the, this one in the Ames jeans and it is not a locking zipper. You gotta make sure you have a locking zipper. So these, this is my stash right here. I don't have very many, but look, this one will work for that. I guess I could do black for the ripstop one. What else do I have here? I have a navy seven inch. I'm kind of surprised it's only a five inch zipper since there's no waistband. That's all I have. These are all um, nylon. They're, all, they're rubber banded. It doesn't look like it's organized, but it really is. Waywack is having a sale, buy three, get one free. So basically zippers are 25% off right now. I think I'll do the black on that one over there. There we go, saved. Okay. Oh yeah, right, I know. I have a fucking book for um, yeah, I mean, I have a pocket bag I really like as well, but you, some of them go um, flush with the side seam to the bottom, which is kind of nice because it anchors it. And some of them will hang free like this and you need one that hangs free for this particular pattern. And it, it can actually hang free higher up if you want, like if you're feeling like this is cutting it close and it kind of is. Let's actually just swoop that away a little bit more. I'm just gonna, cause I, I don't like cutting it close. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to eyeball this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now we've made it higher up. There, and it'll definitely not be interrupt the um, cargo pocket. Oh, that's great, Terry. Yeah, I have a, I, have a, I, I think a bunch of, like one of those bundles was invisible zips. I got that like random assortment bundle from Wayback for the nylon zips and those have been fine. So cheap. All right, so this is pocket fabric. Um, I'm going to, oh, I need this as pocket fabric too. Oh, I do not have enough pocket fabric. Shoot, I have a backup plan. I have, I also have these recipe towels. I thought this one would be cool. He is from Colorado. Look at this tea towel. It's not a recipe towel, look at this thing. So um, his grandmother passed away recently and she had so many souvenir things. She traveled a ton um, and this was in her stuff. This is a very interesting towel. And then she also had <laughs> this. This is what I could also use some of these for pockets. That's what I'm thinking of. I think this is kind of hilarious. Yeah, right. It's kind of like, you know, look at this one. This one's really good. Look at this little fish. He's kind of like, ooh. <laughs> um, and then I, I uh, pre-washed a few things. This matches that ripstop really nicely. So I could do map on one pair. That's maybe what I'll do. Map on one pair. <clears throat> and then maybe I'll do, ooh, this is thinner. This is kind of thicker. That rip stop I feel like is really lightweight. Not, not light, light, but it's light enough and it probably is fast drying as well. This one's so soft. This feels like homespun. I love how it looks like stained and stuff. Like they made it look like parchment. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I find Western stuff kind of like lately I've been finding it interesting. I, you know, I grew up in California, right? I grew up with like going to ghost towns on field trips or gold mining things. Um, my stepdad, who's been in my life since I was like 12, he has a big affinity for Western stuff. And 
honestly, like a lot of like the Western historical stuff isn't great. Like it's not a great history, right? Um, but a lot of these towns still exist here. So you'll, you can go to an abandoned town. Some of them they like have as like a tourist town. So they've rehabbed the buildings and it, and it's, you know, it's not ancient, <laughs> not ancient, but you know what I mean? So, hey, Michelle, how's it going? I know that fish, he's kind of cute. I feel like it's kind of heavy for his shorts though. So I haven't really been that interested in this stuff because I grew up with it. And right now I actually live in a very like, old west rich area like my neighbor across the street has a gold mine <laughs> and they mine gold um but some of it's kind of been interesting to me lately i'm trying to i'm trying to fit in <laughs> that's what i'm trying to do these towels are old too <laughs> pretty sure she lived in colorado as well maybe this was when she lived there she was a person a very few words that you really wanted to like know like something about something she does she was not interested in talking about it. So I don't know anything about a lot of the stuff we kind of had to absorb. So I'm going to do this I think on one pair of shorts. I'm going to do both maps. Let's do this one on the um ah. What do we think, you guys? Okay, let me move this and this. So this is our two fabrics. We have we have this like putty color one, and we have this um, kind of dark olive green. So let's do the maps on this guy because they're light, very lightweight. But this goes so good. It's like the same color. I could do the maps on this. This is a quilting cotton. I have some of my It Has Pockets fabric. Hmm. I don't know. I have these other tea towels. It's like talking about like using tea towels. Do you ever, if you ever go on vacation and you can't find fabric. You can pick up tea towels like this. I, this is what I've done. I've picked up tea towels places handmade by local artists. That's what I planned it. This was a gift from my friend. I plan to use those someday. He likes sea otters and I have the sea otter fabric. These are all my pre-washed fabrics for your pockets. Maybe I'll do this. I'll do those too like that. We won't make everything kooky for him. Well, I don't know, what do you think? These are kind of heavy. I think this one. I wish I had a little bit of muslin so I could offset the thickness. This one's actually, it's like a very thick linen. Now you're hungry, <laughs> Kaza. <laughs> Have you eaten that, Betsy? Have you made this? Shrimp. That's interesting. I don't see the shrimp. It's Peruvian. Oh. Thank you, Rachel. Raquel, sorry. Now I really want to use tea towels. What if we did this tea towel and this maps? How's that? We'll do that. Peruvian. I don't think I've had Peruvian food before. That would be a treat. Menu. Cool. Yeah, let's do this. 
All right, let's cut our pockets first <laughs> because we want to. <laughs> So this right here, I usually take the, when I'm doing a welt pocket, I will photograph the, um, like make a photocopy of the pattern piece on cardstock. So that's what this is. This is just a template you're gonna see. There's the dart and you can see I've folded it before. So I like to just draw the box right on there. So I'm putting that in the bin just so you kind of have that little idea. Artsy mashed potatoes. Ooh. We're going to do the butt patch on one pair. He said no butt patch this time. And I was like, you sure you don't want one pair? He's like, you want to sew a pair with a butt patch, don't you? I'm like, I do. <laughs> so we'll do a butt patch on one pair. Let's do them on, let's do them on the rip stop pair because um, in my experience, rip stop rips worse than most fabrics. Oh, really? El Pollo Inca, okay. I don't have that. I'm not, I'm not living in a very, <laughs> like it, there is definitely food from other cultures here, but it's not very diverse. A lot of options. I know, right, Terry? This is a good one. I was kind of glad, like I know that I've already sewn these before, but he wears the heck out of these things. Like in the summer, he wears these all the time. So I was like, all right, we're going to make, we're going to make some. So we need to get, oh, I just don't have enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I still need this. Look at this big honking pattern piece. My God. What we need, what we need is a solid. We need a solid. So we could just do the underside of these pockets in a solid. I don't have very many solids. Isn't that crazy? I just don't. I just don't. I really wish I did. What is this right here? Is this washed? This does not look washed. We need some washed muslin. I have some pocket fabric. Oh, I do have a some white muslin. Are we stretching this? Oh, could I use the self fabric for the solid? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so obvious. Thank you. <sighs> All right. So the top pocket we will not cut in the print. We're just going to cut the um, I still don't have enough. Look at this thing. It's a big honking pattern piece. <laughs> we're going to have to splice this. This is the back um, pocket. So we're just going to have to splice this. All right. What do we want on our pockets? Do we want like me and then new like that? Like that? I think that'd be kind of cute. Let's do, I feel like it's gonna get covered. Is it gonna get covered by the facing? I think it is gonna get covered by the facing. Too bad we can't go above it like this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Shim. Yeah, you're here to help, yeah. I think he does use the back pocket. I'm not sure though. I really wish I could go above this. I'm gonna go as far up as possible. There's not much hem here, otherwise I'd let it out. We're gonna go as high as possible here. And um, we're committing. <laughs> we are committing. You guys gotta remind me what I've decided to do though. This one's going toward, to the, um, was this one going to the, which one's going to the khaki pants? I mean the um, olive green and the putty, the maps are going, hmm, let's think about this. Did 
That's true, Betsy. I probably could have asked him. I'm gonna put this off grain a little bit so I can get that E there. That didn't help actually. All right. <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> it's going to actually just say M U. Oops. Let's see if we can get a little notch on here. We also have this one here and I'm going to just draw this line on here right now with a little bit of this crayon. This is like a stitching line to kind of secure the pocket. And I don't care about that notch right there. All right, so we have this one. I'm gonna lay those on the fat. Once I have them cut out, we'll decide which pant they go with. All right, so here's my so let's take a little piece of paper. Let's take a bigger piece of paper. Oh my goodness. And I'm gonna actually tape this on here so I don't forget to do it. You know, <laughs> I am nimble with that blade. This pocket is pretty generic as far as the markings go. Usually you'd have the pocket opening marked on here as well. Should we get a lot of food? What do you think he's gonna think about this? <laughs> Look, it's even signed. It's nice to be able to use these things though. I really didn't know, like when I saw the amount of linens and things she had, I was like, oh my gosh, we, we just can't absorb all that. And it wasn't like we knew what it was from or what it was for. She didn't seem emotionally attached to these things. But I just didn't want to send them, like I didn't want to donate them. I thought they were too cool. Ground Kona coffee, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so we have this set. This is gonna be cute. I'm, I'm into this. I'm into this. Um, let's cut our maps. Now this one I have enough fabric for, so we can do Unless we want to save the, the um, I can actually get one set of pockets if I do them side, do it sideways like this. There's one set there and then I could do the back pockets. But I don't know if this is big enough. Let's see. One of my tips for, by the way, is um, when you are doing the back pocket, there are two pattern pieces in the pattern drafting world that are usually marked incorrectly if you're using a directional print. Um, and this is one of them. When you are using most back pockets for welts, they are going to mark it like this and you need to cut it like this. This, I cut mine correctly because we put a seam in it. So you just need to make sure that um, wherever the marking, like say this side 
um, let's give you some perspective. Let's say this is the side. And if this sews to the pants, right? So the box sews to the pants, right? So this is the pants. And now we're looking at the back of the pants from the outside and the pocket is sewn. So this is up against the inside of the pant. And if you turn the pants inside out, this would show to the world if your pants were inside out, right? So most people, when they mark their pattern, they put this piece, the pattern piece like this and they put, oh, cut to in lining with this box at the top of the pattern piece. And if you do that, you're going to get an upside down inner pocket that shows when you turn your pants inside out. So in other words, if your pocket piece looks more like this with the little box right here, cut it upside down if you have a directional print and when you look at the inside of your garment, you don't want it to be upside down. So that's my little PSA today. So do I wanna try and like save this fabric? Like what I could do is do the same thing, like piece it together. So we could do two, I don't know. I could just do two whole pockets like this, self. I can do two whole pockets like this. I like that idea. Let's do that. I'm less attached to this border. And I could use this border maybe for something else someday. It's the same with collars. I told you guys the other day about collars. Most collars, top collars specifically, are marked so that you're gonna cut your print upside down when you fold your collar down. So far, those are the only two errors I've ever found with how we were taught how to draft patterns. <laughs> the only other things that are different are trends, you know? Trends make, you, make us do things a little differently. not doesn't mean it's inaccurate then it just means in this decade we cut the rise this tall in <laughs> this decade we cut the rise that tall that's not bad or wrong all right so now we have these I love the map it looks so cool with the border cut off of it love it if you ever come to my house, which none of you are ever coming to my house, <laughs> I love you, but, <laughs> um, and you use my guest bathroom, <laughs> we have a wall of framed maps on the wall of all the places. Well, it's not all the places, but a lot of the places that we've been. And so we like maps a lot and they're just kind of like not around anymore. It's kind of crazy, you know? All right, so let me think about this. Wait, let's see. If I put this one like this, I think I kind of want it. Do I want to go like that or do I, I want to? I think I want to center it over that and then this. Yeah. Can you place the board together and make the inside of the back? Ooh. Maybe. I like that idea too. That would be nice and smooth and comfortable too. Do we like that? Do we're going to get what we like over here? Yeah, we like that. <clears throat> Man, cutting this kind of badly. Let me check it out and clean it up a little bit. Oh, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. 
I had to iron this at home after I washed it, which, you know, just not as good as my iron here now that I'm an iron snob. I get so excited to iron my fabric out of the laundry and then I'm like, oh, that's right. I have to use my home iron, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> I don't know why I complain, but you know, so. It is a curve, but maybe we can piece it together and make it not a curve. Maybe we could do that for the menu as well. Let's see, where's my waist facing? Is this it? This is it right here. I definitely, did I change? Okay, there we go, right there. I think that's where, yeah. So I made these shorts an inch smaller in circumference. And so I just, I slashed, where is it? Is it right here? Where did I do that? I know I did it on this one right here. There's the slash right there. And then that's a quarter of an inch. That's a half inch. Where is it on this piece? Maybe I just, oh, I probably just trimmed it off. That's probably what I did. I just can't see the other sizes right there. That's what it is. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure I actually made it smaller. All right, so let's see uh, if we could get this in the border. If I piece it together, probably can. I need two, though. So... Wait, look, we can probably get trolley cars. Oh, was it wide enough? It's not. Oh, it's, oh, it is kind of. Oh my goodness. We could get one trolley car and then one of this border. Or we could do two borders. Look at this. With sideways people. Oh, it's so close. This is kind of fun. I feel like this is, that's acceptable. I have some slits there though. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. Oh no, just ripped it right there. The stitches are legit four inches, four per inch. They're huge, huge, huge stitches. Okay, let's see if we can gain back a little bit. Is this boring or what? Sorry. I need to press this. I think we can get it if we press this, let's see. Oh yeah, let's go to the iron. Okay, Terry. Um, what am I doing? Here we go. Let's, um, let's press this open a little bit. husband's very, very um, tolerant of me, isn't he? Did I not do this one? I thought I did this one. Oh, there it is. Okay. This didn't do very far. Oh, this is the one I started to rip. It's okay. The rip's down low. It's going to be fine. We had a thought and you carried it out. Yeah, <laughs> good, oh good. Oh good, cool. 
I sometimes think like, well, then I guess I have to think about it as a perspective. Like, otherwise I'd just be cutting out shorts and you're like, yeah, we know how to do that. It's boring, right? But um, I guess this is a little more different than we, we usually do here, right? Some variable. Plenty of room. Look at all that room we have now. <laughs> Can we get it like more on the green? Hmm. It's close, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's a curve anyway. What a good idea. I love it. See, I, if I were doing this alone, I would not have gotten this amazing idea. You guys have saved me twice now, right? <laughs> yeah, the iron, right? It's, it's really good. Like, um, I don't think I, I tell people the things you need to buy, you know, but that is one thing I'm like, okay, when you can splurge for that, cut, start cutting on a table off the floor. Number one, get a table, dedicated table, even if it's not dedicated, dedicated. And then eventually when you're like, okay, I'm feeling like everything's going really good. I like everything. How could I up this? Get a really nice iron. I mean, $100, I feel like, is very affordable when you're getting equipment like this, too. Okay, so we have... Now, you need to tell me which one goes with which. So, here we go. We have this inside waistband. So, basically, we have maps and menu. I have the, um, it's called hot steam iron. Um, it's not like super, super fancy either. Oh, that's so great, JB. I love that. <laughs> Maps with the dark rip stop and then menu with the canvas. Like this. This is what we're thinking. I do kind of like that. I love the way this map looks with the ripstop here. And then, mid, yeah, this is, I like this. This actually really warms up this putty color in person. Okay, so now that we know that, let's get these pieces so that it's not confusing now. So this one has its full pocket contingent. Um, it just needs the other side, the top pockets cut in this. So. In other words, this one needs this pattern piece. I sort of want two bins today until I have these completely cut out, just so I keep, them tra keep track of which is which. Okay, so that's the rip stop. So I'm gonna <laughs> be very literal with myself like this and I'm gonna tape this little piece of fabric to the front of my bin like this so I know all the stuff that goes in there goes to that bin. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I didn't, I kind of shied away from using that term because I felt like it's two. I really can't claim that I'm batch cutting, you know? <laughs> all right, so we need this. Here. And for this one over here, we need the under pocket still. And we need the top pocket in self. Okay. All right, so let's just start cutting now. We don't need the facing for this pair. These fabrics are extremely different in size width and width so we're going to um, cut them out separately too 
I'm making room now. I just need to move everything out of the way. I might need that. And we're going to do butt patch on this one. So we'll cut out our rip stop first. This is the, this is interfacing. So I could just get rid of this little piece, but we'll just put it under there. We're going to cut out the things in interfacing as well. Oh yeah, I mean, tr if I truly was doing batch cutting, batch cutting, I have to admit, I haven't done a lot of batch cutting since I closed Chicken Boots. And that was like batch cutting supreme, right? Because we were cutting hundreds. <clears throat> but um, we weren't sewing necessarily all of all of that stuff at one time. We, we would cut the entire product line at one time. So we would trace off all of the pieces onto one piece of paper that we've optimized to, so that we got the, the best you know, layout, right? And then um, I could get two pairs of shorts out of this width of this fabric. It is hanging off my table. Look how far it's hanging off my table. Like four inches. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it is a surprising number of parts. <laughs> oh, this is also lengthened one and a half inches. I just did this because it was um, like this when I cut him out the first time. So he must have requested that. Or I just follow, I think I followed a pair of his shorts. That's what it was. Uh, we might go this way, yeah. If I'm batch sewing though, I do try and stick to one thread color, you know? So this, I feel like this isn't really like true batch cutting right now because I'm doing one pair at a time. It was really, oops, I just cut my dart off. Um, it was really, uh, I loved the setup of when we would do a production run, like, okay, this week we're going to, like, we would plan it out, right? You know, we'd be like, okay, this week we're going to do um, all of this and this. And we knew how many hours it took to do as, as many of those things as possible, right? So let's say we were doing, um, I don't know, we were going to do double doubles and notions wedgies and we would do those because we knew okay we could do both of those in one week if we only sew x number of each and then we'd have two products and we'd have this much done and we had to do it for many fabrics and then we would group them by thread color i'm gonna get my hair marker to mark this pocket right here little plastic thing here. I'm going to mark the um, cargo pocket right here. This is all the marking you get, this little corner. So I'm going to mark it now. And I'm just going to do that same little rectangle. I can also mark this right now, but I'll probably second guess it when we go to sew and mark it again but that's pretty good like look at how good this thing works can you see that oh you can't even see it doesn't look good at all <laughs> oh you can't see it at all but i just drew a box on here so when it goes all the way through oh i love this thing <laughs> i know i'm always using it now and it's just this little plastic thing <laughs> i just love it Ooh, this marks so good on this fabric yeah we love that we love to see that. It's a very small, it's a micro batch, <laughs> right? <laughs> micro batch. Yeah, 
I can get full pair of shorts um, across. That's how wide this fabric is. I think he'll really like this fabric. I showed it to him when I got it. He was like, cool. <laughs> My husband's gonna have a whole new wardrobe this year. I've sewn so much for him. We did three camp shirts in the last month. And then he's getting two pairs of shorts this week. Two weeks from now, he's getting another button down, button up. And then I have fabric to make one more button up that I got from the same place I got this for him. So all the fabric he picked out from hearts, I've, I think I've used it. Yeah, I have. So that's cool. <laughs> exactly, I know, exactly, Shem, you're, you're a batch king. All right, let's mark our, um, zipper drill and then we're going to mark our other side of our cargo pocket this is one thing if you are doing any kind of batch mark everything right off the bat you you won't be able to keep the pattern piece with it because you'll have so many going that you um, will want the markings on there if you if you're doing it you're doing it probably because you want it to be faster and that's just a good way to do it Okay, set that aside. This might be able to be used. The other fabric is lighter, so I'm sorry this is so dark. This is a cargo pocket. Let's just turn this. Hi Sue, how's it going? No apology necessary. All right, Jackie. Oh, I miss seeing you that you're leaving. Have a good one. Yeah, I love doing that. Like if, if um, anyone wants to hire me to be their logistics manager, I am your gal, man. You want something that's optimized for speed. You want everything to flow. I am your gal. I, I love, I thrive on that kind of um, prep and planning. And so like when Ryan would walk in or whoever we had that day, I would have everything like laid out and ready. No instruction necessary practically. It was my favorite thing. I have this nice piece down here that I'm trying to utilize. I'm just looking at, like, can I keep that on grain in there? I could do it upside down. Look at that. Ooh, that's so tempting. I don't think this fabric has a direction either, so I might as well. But I'm going to put my selvage lined up on the grid here of my table. And then that way I can use the grain line that's on here. I'll show it to you. There's the green. Bonjour. Welcome in. All right, let's see. We can just now measure on the table here. We can slide this down, like way down, like that. Right there. Okay, we have our cargo pockets. We don't need the waist facing on this one. This is lining anyway. We're going to put that piece with there. Um, we need some pocket flaps. I need four of those. This right here I was hoping would go for, oh, wait. This might actually go, oh, this is the cross grain. It's like this. Never mind. It's this one. That works. Or a belt loop, but it's only one layer. Hmm, that's kind of tempting to do though. You know? 
I don't like cutting this in my big piece of fabric. So we'll set that aside there. Get one of these here. That's how it goes. Okay, we'll put the pocket. This is the only one. Oh, this is a fly extension. It's a it's like that. So we only need one each. Oh wait, wait. the back pocket. Oh, this is fly extension. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. Is there no, oh, cause it's got a built-in fly. I'm sorry. I just totally confused myself just now. That was kind of funny. I can get that there. Here's my grain. And then we need two back pocket facings four back office facings and we have four of these and we need this so we only need one of this though so we're just gonna put that there there we go hi Aisha how's it going How many of you use the cutting layout? I probably should sometimes. This is the butt patch. We're gonna do, do only on this pair. Notch right here. Pretty much the only seam that it goes to is the inseam and the crotch rise, so we really don't have any place to notch. Let's get rid of this guy here. I'm still gonna put the belt loops on even though we made the waist smaller. Just in case. Oh no, air vents aren't for thumbs. <laughs> Poor thing. I think we all remember when we slammed our finger in the car door at some point, right? See ya Betsy, are you checking out, taking, taking off? Sounds good, buenas noches. After the Fairfield burn, wait, I almost used the cutting layout just to know, oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, it only takes being like burned bad. Like you're like, oh shoot, never again. I'm kind of surprised how often it happens on camera for me. This one I'll probably keep. Oh wait, what's what's going on here? This is a pleat. It says pin tuck and pleat. So is it which one is it? Is it a pleat or a pin tuck? We just really need the um, notches at the top and the bottom. That'll be enough. We should mark the snaps now though. I hate it when I forget to mark my snaps on flaps and pockets like this. They're so fiddly sometimes and you kind of forget until you're like halfway sewing it, you know? So let's mark the... Snap. And we'll do the same on this here. We need four of this though, so I'll probably do two here and then I'll do one, two, like that. Or maybe actually here. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, they're, sometimes they do something kind of tricky on their cutting layouts in relation to how much yardage they said it takes. And so then, you know, you just never know, right? They're not telling you, you know, make sure you follow the cutting layout because of the yard yardage amount, right? If, if they just said that, then we'd look. Oh, man, I'm itchy. This is the little pocket facing. Why do I need four of these? Oh, I know why, because one of them is like a facing and the other one is the other kind of facing. So there's one that's going to be the, the, the sews to the pocket opening itself. And then the other is going to be the um, one that if you looked inside the pocket, you see that. Look at the difference that makes. So I have this here, right? If I did this one, it pokes up above this line. I'm always trying to get my fabric in line, right? So then I'm like, okay, I'll just put this narrower one here, this one here, and it kind of brings it down. This, I only need one of this. Kind of pains me to cut in the middle there, you know? <laughs> oh, really, Elena? Yeah, I mean, and sometimes, we, yeah, if you're winging it on fabric, it's probably best not to look at the layout. <laughs> Six and a half, six and a half. When you are a member of their club, Elena, do they tell the club what pattern's coming? Or is it the same as what they do on Instagram? Like a sneak peek type of thing. This is my lengthened pocket. Yeah, I really wish sometimes I would at least look at some of them because it has, um, you know, they, done, they just did something kind of like, oh, I didn't anticipate that. I don't know why I'm using this all the time. I am Team Hera right now. You know? I could see the mark on the side. It almost does it better. All right, so we still need this piece for that one. So I'll put it over there with that pattern. What was that? Okay, that was just a Sharpie. Let's make sure it didn't fall in the trash. The only one that comes to mind that I feel like could be inefficient is the, the um, tea house dress. And I only say that because it says it takes seven yards of fabric, you know, and I just don't believe that it actually takes that. And I think a lot of people don't make it because of that. They're like seven yards, I don't have seven yards. It does not take seven yards. <clears throat> Yeah, they can't, they really can't cater to everything. Because what if you have a directional print or some matching? There's a lot of different fabric widths too. So you might be like, okay, I'm going to the store and buy fabric specifically for this project. I'm going to follow exactly their directions. And you don't fall in love with anything that kind of, you know, is the right width or something, you know. There we go. Elena, we had a, a huge uh, Gilbert collar versus neckline discussion yesterday in the, the live chat in the guild. 
apparently um, there's a lot of easing that has to be done. <clears throat> and I thought of you. I know I'm cutting through both layers, but we're just gonna, for efficiency's sake. Oops, that wasn't good. Just need one. You never noticed? Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, you probably sew it the way she says with the yolk side down. When I saw that, I was like, oh, that's a very specific instruction. And I meant to say, it's probably this, you know, follow that and it'll just go. Where's Elena? Yeah. <laughs> what size do you make, Elena? And which, uh, which a uh, size band do you have? I'm just looking at the rip stop on here. Even though I'm cutting two layers, I'm just kind of looking at the pocket to make sure it's sort of lined up since it's a flap. Yeah, it's three quarters of an inch different. It's quite a bit and a half inch on the uppermost size. But I was just wondering like, is it like that for all sizes or just the 12 to, to 30? Oh, you have the lower band, okay. Yeah, the 12 on the low, the upper band was three quarters of an inch different. Do I want to interface these? This and interfacing, mm, no. Do I want to do that? Oh, I do want to mark this um, buttonhole. But well, let's just two two layers at a time, Jeremy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just I only did I only measured three sizes. I didn't want to measure all of them, Aisha, because I I would have had to print out too many. <clears throat> so I just wanted to print out one layer. So I did three sizes, like the bottom, the eighteen, and then the thirty. The eighteen, because so many people were using that one. And that way the lines that I needed to measure were far away from each other. I could tell them apart. Oh yeah, exactly. I'm just saying like, um, um, yeah, the 14 is definitely going to be, I feel like going to be that way. What am I doing here? I just marked these. Where's my other, oh God, this is totally blending in. You hand base the collar every time. Oh, okay. Huh? Yeah, I don't doubt you at all. You have the different size band too. <clears throat> oh, okay, and you need to find the 16. Yeah, so you guys must be doing it the way they instruct or your fabrics work really good with it. That's cool. Okay, so do I want, I think I'll do interfacing in this. Yeah, so we'll do interfacing for this. Do I want interfacing on here though? I don't think I want interfacing on all four of these. That's just too much this to my pocket. I'm only going to do interfacing for the pocket opening and that's it. I'm not going to do it for this piece. You don't, you can do that though. <laughs> this is right here. This is the cargo pockets. Okay. Fly extension, pocket facing, big pocket facing. All right, let's line up our bin here. Let's, let's layer our bin the way we're gonna sew it together. And then we can set this whole bin aside. Let's see here. We're gonna try and do it in the order of the instructions. Cause I try and be helpful that way. <laughs> okay. So first is pocket flaps. Oh wait, one is belt loops. Where's my belt loops? Okay. Belt loops, pocket flaps, cargo pocket. Let 
Maybe, I don't know. Big pockets and All right, so here is the big pocket is going to be the one is basically your uh, bottom pocket. That is the technical term, bottom pocket, not not big pocket. <laughs> um, and then we have the top pocket here. Ooh, here we go. This goes like that. This, this piece is like this. If you have a directional print, it's not like this, like I just cut it. It's like this. All right. Yeah, I measured it all. Like, I believe you, Mullen, but I, I measured it. It doesn't measure. But I don't think it's wrong. Oh, I, I yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I looked for errata on the website. I meant to tell you guys that, but um, I couldn't find errata there. And I realized, oh, it's a PDF. If there's errata, she would just fix it and send you guys a new one. Okay, so back and the butt patch. Butt patch, back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't own that pattern. Okay, so my back pocket and my pocket facings right here next mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have our when did we attach the front pockets was that when we assembled the front pockets oh yeah right here okay she's so funny when you do something, sometimes there's not a picture for it, and so I just miss it. <laughs> okay, there we go. This goes here, here, and then zipper. Belt loops again. And then waist facing. Okay, that's all the pieces. Just wanna make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, and then I'm gonna go flip, just like that amazing TikTok cook. And she, she's that tiny little thing and she flips those massive dishes of food and she goes. Ugh. Mine's a lot lighter. <laughs> okay. Do our other pair. Don't need the butt patch on this pair, so I'm gonna put that away. Maybe. Yeah, that's a, I, in my opinion, th three quarters of an inch is a lot to ease in for somebody. That's just, it's too, t because the collar is straight and the, and the neckline is a curve, you can ease stuff in. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I do think that that's a lot to ask people to do. And I don't think there, there's no reason you should, there's no reason to, to design the pattern that way. Um, unless they have found they like it that way, but I don't think that um, it's necessary, so, but I don't know, I'm not the pattern designer, so it's not my pattern. I'm trying to be diplomatic because like, things happen, but the grade was <clears throat> uh, in, a little inconsistent. Like sometimes it would be a 16th of an inch more between sizes or 16th of an inch less between sizes. And that's kind of a strange thing to happen. It's not wrong. It's just that that can lead to discrepancies, but it was pretty much either three, it was three quarters of an inch in the lower sizes and a half inch off in the upper sizes. So um, it was consistently off for the most part. 
That's not a small amount though. If you have it and you don't want, you don't know how to deal with it, make your collar bigger or cut a bigger size. If you're on that lower end, you're gonna to need to add an eighth of an inch to each end of your collar because the front neck to the front neck to shoulder, center front to shoulder is a quarter of an inch off. And then on each on total, so an eighth of an inch on each front. Between the shoulders, it is a half inch off. So just slice straight down the middle of your collar and separate it a half inch, put the notch in the middle of that, the center back notch, and that's it. Maybe it's graded in metric. That wouldn't make a change. Oh, I see why you're saying that. I don't know. That could be it. That's actually a really good, I love that. That's a really interesting thing, Mullen. You're probably onto something there. That's why I say I don't think it's technically wrong because as long as the garment fits and sews together, that's all that matters, so. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just got, I got the pieces to measure and that was it. So I just checked it out just to help people out. So this, pat this fabric is so much narrower, isn't it? It's crazy. I really can't stretch that anymore, okay. It's the end of my table. Well, I, well, that doesn't make sense. They, they didn't convert anything for me. I did the measuring, but that would, it, the, the metric grading would make sense because the input of the number is going to be rounding, like not rounding it, but it would round inches differently, right? Because if they're using metric, which is more precise as far as like, oh, I can say this number. When you go to measure it in inches, inches is too too, um, it's not as precise, right? So if you go to measure, you know, the same distance in over and over again in different sizes in inches versus metric, if you graded it in inches and you graded it um, equally, then it'd be like whatever, whatever the grade is, say the grade is a quarter inch precise, it would be a quarter inch precise. But if you graded it in metric, right? And it's like, instead, um, what's a quarter inch, like 6.35 millimeters or something like that. That 0.35, like it probably, they probably can do 6.3, not 0.35. That 0.05 is gonna make it change a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. So it's a really, that's actually probably really good. But it doesn't mean that that contributed to the neck being off. They're completely separate. The neck will only be off if the base size was off or if it was graded wrong, 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 you know? And it wasn't graded wrong. It was just, I think the base size was off. That's all. I don't, I'm, I feel uncomfortable because I'm not, I don't, no shade on the pattern at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a beloved pattern. It does well. I hope that if, um, it's not preventing people from sewing it like Elena would just said. You know, when you don't see a lot of the pattern in the upper ranges, if, their range, if the range was added later, I worry that it's either because people are like, have moved on and they're like, yeah, I like that pattern when it came out, but I've kind of moved on from that. I found a solution in my size and now I don't need it. There's that, right? Or it's not fitting great so people aren't posting their pictures or they can't sew it together. So there's that kind of, you have to worry about the, a lot of things. I don't, you do not envy anybody worrying about those things. Um, I kind of want to do this. My grain line is right here. That's my grain line. Boop. 
Here we go. I, I would love, like my other job I would love is if I got to check patterns. <laughs> I saw, I got invited to test a pattern and I was like, no, I'm not doing that for free. <laughs> because they don't want you to test it as in, look, there's a piece of wood here. Um, oh, it's from my thing. I can see where it came off. Um, they don't want you to actually find issues. <laughs> You know, they don't want you to say, oh, I think your grade's off, right? They're going to be like, oh, well. <laughs> we just asked all these people to sew it because we want photos to promote our, our garment. Or our pattern. Yeah. It only has one collar. Hmm. I I find it really interesting the whole like the whole process with um home sewing patterns. I would love to know more about how it happens because in my experience, if your base size is like everything is cool with it, right? It is like, everything is like 100%. It fits great. It sews together perfectly. <clears throat> when you grade it, that should not change at all. Like that should, if it's a good grader, they're going to know how to grade it and translate that, right? So um, this to me speaks that there's something up with which base size they used. And it could be like a silly thing, like the wrong line got digitized in. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Mark in my pockets. I was doing the, I've thought about doing a pattern line, you know, but I don't know. I just did the math. I was like, okay, what if, um, how many patterns, because I've done this math before when I've been like talking about pattern companies and honestly just trying to be like, you know, let's cut them some slack. <laughs> Not that people think I do, but I do because I know what it's like and I know that it isn't easy to keep track of all that stuff, especially if you're a one or two person show. If you did the math on what a pattern company could make per year by selling patterns, it's hard. Like if you do the math and make, it really puts it into perspective. So when people complain about like subscription plat uh, based selling, I, I understand what they're saying, but at the same time, if we want some of these pattern companies to survive, they're going to have to do something. There's just too many patterns out there. They got to set themselves apart and they, they have to be able to um, pay the bills and pay their employees. <laughs> Basic stuff, right? But too many gosh darn people give so much away for free and it's kind of ruined so much of commerce now. All right. Uh, I don't know what that little notch was there for. But I think I'm just going to stick with that. That's it. Let's get our pattern envelope out so we can put these pieces away as we cut them out. Okay, cool. Ooh. Careful, it's a brand new knife. Oh, we don't need this or this, right?
Let's, let's slide this down. We get more fabric. We have all these little pieces. Could have, I guess I could have ironed it a little bit, huh? three quarters, eight and three quarters. Can I slide this down a little more? Get that cargo pocket on there. Let's look at all these other guys here. We have this, I only need a half of this, right? This is the one we're piecing together. So I pulled off the seam allowance already. So this is what we'll do. We'll just hang this off a little bit more. So we don't forget our seam allowance because I am really terrible when I'm streaming. I will forget that. Can this fit here? Maybe it can fit right here. And this can fit over here. I like that. We have this one pocket loop piece. We also have this piece, which is actually on the fold. We love that. Um, I don't think I can fit that there. One, two, one, two. Hmm. One, two. <laughs> I get so stingy with fabric, it's terrible. Ooh, this uses up a lot. I like that, okay. That is on there. We just need one of this. We need four of this. Two, oh, well, let's put the, the, you should put your big pieces on as soon as possible. Do I want this in this canvas for the facing on this piece? Maybe I want something a little lighter weight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Shem. It just won't, the, you know what'll happen is that if I cut that one with seam allowance, and I forgot this one, it would make that seam curl, not curl under, the seam wouldn't be right at the bottom of the pocket bag. You know what I mean? I don't think that people should, like two, one to two patterns a month is a lot. It's, it's just a lot, people can't do that. You know what I found interesting was the, the new fiber mood. I'm looking forward to ch pattern chatter this week. <laughs> and here, I'll plug my community, you know, join up, join the SoSo -So Guild, become an apprentice member if you wanna support me. And you get to come to pattern chatter, which is super fun, where we release, or, I mean, we talk about newly released patterns. It's a little snarky sometimes, but it's really, it's all in good fun. Um, we have probably our most candid fun time during that. I love it. Um, yeah, I think I noticed with the Fiber Mood catalog, the the all, almost all of those garments take so much fabric. <laughs> like, are they in cahoots with fabric companies? Like, seriously. And they're just, like, not fitted at all. They're just like, here, put a piece of elastic in this neck and let it hang off your body or let's put the elastic here or let's put the gathers here it's just all unstructured loose not fitted I don't know yeah exactly Elaine I think that's the way to go I mean of course I mean that's your and plus you're you really love that comp particular company right so you're, and you like their aesthetic, like it speaks to you. So of course you're going to do that. And because you really like that company, you're more likely to buy their patterns anyway. A club membership makes perfect sense. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, I get all their new patterns and they're cheaper. 
right? Because you would have been buying them normally and it would have been more expensive. So I, I'm not against the, the subscription model at all. I think they should do it differently as far as like, if you have, you have to join in order to get it. I think what they should do is make all their club patterns available at full price. But if you join the club at an annual, you get it for cheaper. That's what I think. Because I think people want patterns and they don't buy it because they don't want to do the whole like sign up and cancel thing. When we know that it's probably fine, right? Signing up and canceling is going to go well, but it's just one of those things. It's just like, it's, 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 it's a, it's a roadblock, you know, but if you made that pattern for $5 more to the general public, they'd probably buy it, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Right. Elena. Exactly. Yes, exactly. It is the, it's the Paris map. Did you just see that? That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. I think they do shim. I, I think they a hundred percent do. Oh no, JB. <laughs> oh. Sorry to hear that. Okay, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna set you aside as well. I didn't do these notches yet because I'm talking. <laughs> oh yeah, the Brooks. Um, who's the Brooks jeans? These are cut, right? Yeah, I just didn't pick them up yet because I was talking. Did you see that Fiber Mood has kids patterns in it? I don't know if they always do. I don't know if they're good kids patterns, but I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Shem, they do. The, uh, those two subscription communities, they have tutorials and all that fully. They may not, it may not be obvious because I don't know if you follow them or not, but... Um, yeah. Oh, Helen's Closet. Okay, cool. I knew I, it was really familiar. I couldn't remember whose it was. I never made the Legato jeans. Uh, that is one pattern I did buy. I, f I felt like I owed it to Love Notions to sew, sew a pair of their pants and like them. Because <laughs> I just was kind of hard on those glissandos being kind of a train wreck. even though people love them. They did, Elena? That's cool. That makes it easy for you. Let's see, where am I at here? Let's get this one out of the way. Yeah, I'm in four Mighty Networks. <laughs> Oh, the other service they're using are shutting down. Oh, what a bummer. What a pain in the butt. Let's see here. What do we got left? I'm just going to lop this off and pull it toward me like this. Oh, this would go right here. Let's put this fold on there and we'll measure. Well, I don't know why I just did that. I could just measure from the fold. <laughs> we are just our own worst enemy sometimes, aren't we? 
nine and three eighths. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm gl I'm so glad that people like it. I I think the um I don't know what community closet core was using before that, but it was more like a like a forum based, right? Cuz Mighty Networks is pretty unique. It's so much better at building community than those, but I have thought in the past like, oh, I can see why people don't do it the way I did it because maybe they don't want to manage a lot of um, engagement, which I know is counter to why you start something like that. But people will say, oh, it's a community and it's really not. It's just like a bunch of threads. And it's really hard to like have a conversation about anything. But, um, In some ways, some people like that, I think. It just makes it easier. They're like, yeah, we don't really want to manage a huge community community. They just really want a place for resources and, and like, you know, people can connect and share things. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're a CCB completionist. All right, so we have this other half of the dart. And we finished this pattern piece, so let's put it in here. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, I could use a sun hat. And then they said, and we narrowed the crown. I was like, nope, don't want that. I cannot do a narrow crown like that. It's too tight and it's too hot. <laughs> I need something that breathes, you know? My straw hat is getting kind of like, it's and it's really old, I understand. <laughs> but um, the straw hat, because I've sweat and been hot in it, it's shrinking the band <laughs> on the inside. So I gotta get something new. I've been thinking a lot again about, um, this, this is a topic change. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot again about production and manufacturing and, and running a business. Also, I've been thinking about it as far as like a content creator. There was this person I follow on Instagram that is nothing to do with sewing. It's, she's a cook and I, she's local to me. And she had this like, um, a meal, not a service, but like you could buy pre-made meals and then just heat them up at home, right? And they looked really yummy. Um, and I had always wanted to try it, but we moved out of town right before I, right when I found out about it. So I was like, okay, well someday maybe I'll get to do this if I'm going to town and stuff. And it looks like she pivoted. I don't know why, maybe the pandemic kind of killed that. Um, but she, so I still follow her and stuff and she does like basically now like content creation, I think. But she had a post where she was like kind of looking for advice from others like how, how do I do this like you know how do you you know I think basically she's disappointed with money right hi Casey how's it going um oh you do <laughs> you don't have to retract your messages if you write a typo and so I was like, okay, I actually, I don't know anything like about the cooking you're doing, but I, I can actually speak to this because I may be over 50 and I may not be some young person using social media, but literally we've been here since it was born, right? Like we watched it all developed. We are pros in our own rights and our, my generation developed this stuff, right? So, and the generations before me. So, um, and we're constantly left out of that, right? 
Content creation is not a way to make money. It is not a viable career path. It is a lucky career path. You, if you get lucky doing it, that's what you go for it, right? So, oh, it's fine, Casey, no worries. You can be behind. <laughs> um, and I just, I said as much, I was like, you know, the thing is like, you have to have, you have to be selling something and you're, and if you're not selling something, you're counting on an, a, a platform paying you and they don't care. They don't, they don't care. Instagram does not care about my followers or me. They care about their views and getting traction on their platform, right? Or really big names on their platform. And they can change their algorithm and their, their, and their platform any day of the week. They can do whatever they want. So if you are, basically they're your boss then, and you don't want TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram to be your boss. <laughs> Not if you've built your audience. And I wanted to talk because I, I don't, I have like, I don't have a huge audience. You know, I'm really a small person, but I definitely pay attention and I understand it. And I know I'm never going to be that big because I'm not some young thing and I'm not doing something universal, right? I'm not doing something that everybody in the world can relate to, even though they should. <laughs> Why am I cutting out of this out again? <laughs> what do I need to do here? I'm talking too much. I need this piece. I need four of this. I have my pocket flaps. This is all I need, right? Oh, I need this guy. I hate it when I leave this piece till the end. It's just what I'm talking about. Do your big pieces first. Do your big pieces first. I don't like this piece being here either, but maybe I could do something like that. Ugh, ugly, ugly layout. Yeah, and it's, I, I just think like, um, Instagram originally was like, oh, we're going to start sending you money for your reels and things. But no one made over $100 unless they were like massive. And we all kind of figured that out, you know, and I was like, whatever, I'm not an Instagram person. You know, like I'm not, that's not where I create my content. Um, and now they don't pay anything. So, <laughs> you know, all the people that were kind of like, cool, this is great. I'm getting $100 a month or whatever they were getting. Now they're not getting anything. It's like, yeah, but if you built your audience, you need to sell them something. It's tough. I feel like I'm not talking to anybody that really, really cares about this kind of stuff because I think about it constantly because it's really interesting to me because I'm not kind of caught up in it. I follow a bunch of um, YouTube like podcasts and things that are really interesting. They talk about people. I have no clue who they are. Oh, exactly. They do, Aisha. And I don't, th they, I don't think they realize that it's all based on luck. Like, you just never know. And I see so many people blow up. And they, then they expand everything to include that audience. And then it just plummets. And then now they're in debt. And they close. And it's so sad, you know. So you have to... Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I watch so many gaming streamers, and some of them are huge. And so many young people are in their, their chat going, hey, so-and-so, I, I want to be just like you someday. Um, you know, how did you get started? You know, and it's like they're, they're not even going to answer that question because they've been doing it for so long, and they're so big, and their chat's flying by. And it's like, cool, that's awesome, kid. Do that. Like, have fun with it, but just do what you like and enjoy it. Maybe it'll be a career. It's a really strange industry, though. Okay. I don't know why I saved that. I did a lot of work for that little piece of fabric. All right. So let's finish my notches and mark some things. And we're going to do some interfacing, too. Yeah, but sponsors don't pay much. Like, it's very typical that, like, when you see sponsored things like, say, on TikTok, most of the people you're seeing who are like smallish creators, and I'm talking like they could even have a million followers, they're getting $150 to $250 for probably one of those sponsorships. Or they're getting product. Product doesn't pay the bills. So you, like I keep saying, if you go into this or if you look at YouTubers and you're like, I want to be like that, 
don't go into it saying, I just want to be famous or big or I want a lot of money. You can't do it for that. You have to love what you, you're doing and the content you're creating. Because if you don't, you're just going to get burnt out. And it's not natural. You have to do something that just really comes natural to you that you really, really enjoy. Yeah, exactly. So many content creators have patrons for a reason or they sell merch. Yeah, so it's it's not a, really a viable path. And you see all these like 20, 20, late 20s, early 30s people being like, I'm done with YouTube. I'm just done. They're, <clears throat> it's been a grind. They've sacrificed a lot. It's like, what do they do now? They skipped the prime years that they would have gone to college, but they got their own little college degree in what they did. Like they're experts at what they did. So they're not uneducated. But now it's like to pivot and to do something else. That's a lot of, um, that's a, it's a, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I think about this a lot, like this is kind of the weird stuff I think about because I think right now money in our world is really in weird places. Money is just not where it's supposed to be. There's just, it's getting paid to people in really strange arenas, you know what I mean? And it gets stuck there. All right. Yes, that's exactly true, Aisha. Yeah, Shem, and that, that's getting harder and harder to be that unique or interesting. I am totally lost the plot of like, what <laughs> pieces I need here. Um, yeah, if you do tech videos, they have a much higher uh, CPM. And um, which is like 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 a cost per minute type of ad revenue, but you also need to get views. It's all about views. It's not about subscribers. It's not about subscribers. It's about views. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Okay, we want we need interfacing in this as well. So these are things we need interfacing in. And a little, we need a little bit of an iron here. <laughs> There's a very wrinkly. This needs interfacing as well. And then let's stack our pieces so we make sure that I didn't forget something. Hello, Eliza. How's it going? I am talking about really boring stuff that really, I'm not even talking about it coherently because I don't want to be too boring. <laughs> but it's uh, stuff that interests me. Oh, no. You just cut your project upside down? No, no. Okay, where's my pockets? They are under the instructions here. Okay. So we have these pockets. We're gonna lay out all our pieces so they are in the order that we want when we go to sew. And it makes it faster, especially if you're gonna do the batch sewing thing. Where's my pockets? Here they are, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Waistband, cargo pockets, fronts, big pocket facing. Okay, cargo pocket right here. Um, this is the fly facing. Here is the back pockets right here. That. There it is, okay, and this, pockets like that. Nice! <laughs> Sorry, Shem. Okay, what were the steps um, that was, get the, I never cut my belt loops, did I? Okay, so we need the belt loop piece. And then we also, oh no, here it is, right here in my hand. Belt loops, pocket, flaps. Uh, let's just look at the instructions. Make sure I get it. I like it being in the order. 
especially if we're going to kind of do two at a time. What I really should be doing is putting these together in the box, interspersed. Hello, how's it going? Potinos. Potinos? <laughs> You're setting up to cut, but maybe not. Cargo pocket. Mm -hmm. Pocket pockets. Fronts. Not doing the butt patch, but then we get to do the welt pockets. Oh, that's right. Those facings create the welts. Do, do, do. I think after that, we just have the um, fly and the waistband. There we go. Dragon scales. <laughs> That'll be cute. <laughs> I don't even know why I follow all that YouTube stuff. I find it so interesting, probably because I'm not, I'm not really involved with that. Like how to, how-to videos don't really, like, they're not part of that whole, like, YouTube thing. <laughs> so I, it's kind of nice not, like, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that. What I have to worry about is everybody giving stuff away for free constantly. That's what drives me crazy. Well, I mean, if he swims upside down, it'll be fine, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so cut two. Okay, that's fine. I was about to say, wait, is this cut one? Because if it is, which side is, which one do I need? Do I need it to be interfacing this way or this way? Yeah, I agree. I think there's just too much information now. Too much information. All right, we're gonna do our fly. I need four of these, what am I doing? I need four. I have two pairs of pants. We gotta double this up. We need to get efficient here. Can we get two more in this? Yes, we can. Let's make sure I have a left and a right and a left and a right. This stuff's kind of, it's not slippery per se, but it does, it doesn't grab each other like say a Pelon does. And the Trico is a little bit more slippery. I mean, slippery is the word, but it's not like slippery, slippery, you know? We need four of these. I'm trying to use all my little scraps here because I generated a lot the other day. So I was kind of thinking, oh, perfect. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Two and two, okay. But you know, oh, you know, I was telling you about the person that I, she asked that question on Instagram, the, the cook content creator. I, I, I answered her and I was just really thoughtful. No one had answered it at all. And I just said, you know, I can't really speak to Instagram or TikTok. I am a YouTuber. I just focus on that. And I just really think that you need to, you need to have something to sell. You need to capture your audience and own it. And you need to not rely on these platforms to pay you because they, they don't care about you. And 
you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, you should get a newsletter list. I've had a newsletter list, and I had a really good newsletter list. I was, it had 7,000 people on it. For, at the time, that was really great, and it, and it was a very active one. I let it go because it costs money to have a newsletter list. And so I just didn't want to pay $100 a month to have it anymore if I wasn't really sending a newsletter all the time. I didn't have something to sell. Like I, it, I was just saying, here's my video recap, you know. I just didn't really want to do that. And so um, I wrote this long thing and I just said, you know, it's, you know you're, it is tough. You're right. It is absolutely tough. You know, you're doing good work, but it's tough. And this is what you got to do. She didn't even like it or reply or anything. And I was like, okay, well, that right there is a very good reason why you're not doing good. <laughs> because you need to engage with people. People just are like, eh, you don't know anything. Or you're old. Or you don't know what you're talking about. Or you're saying they got to like to hear. I don't know. Okay, fly extension. I need this and I need the pocket flaps. I actually love that she has you interface the, the pocket facing because one of my pet peeves is when my pockets kind of collapse right here, you know? I hate that. So we're gonna interface it, even though the canvas probably doesn't need it. We'll just do it on the rip stop. Maybe just the rip stop. We need two of these for two pairs of pants, but otherwise you just need one. I don't overbuy unless they don't let you buy increments of yards, which I just drives me crazy. I don't want an extra half yard for every project I sew. It is not useful to me. Occasionally I get to use it, but it isn't like I don't need it. Drives me crazy. That extra half a yard, geez Louise. You know, is this big enough? No. I really try and get my three inch roll to work all the time, but it just doesn't sometimes. So let's create more scraps. <laughs> okay. We need definitely two of these for the ripstop one because we used fabric. Do I want to do the canvas one? Hmm. Do I want to interface the canvas one? I don't know if I do, you know? Can you please not? There we go. All right, let's see if I can get two more right there. If I don't use them, I'm probably gonna put them on the rip stop. I'll do the waistband of the garment and the facing maybe. I could interface it once it's kind of sewn together to give it a little bit more structure. I always say you don't have to cut interfacing on the grain and here I am <laughs> cutting it on the grain. <laughs> That's funny. So do you guys have any like fun, um, like those of you who it's summer, do you guys have any fun vacation plans this summer? Are you going into a cool, like, do you get to go to a cool fabric store or something? Oh, really, Pondinius? Yeah, I imagine. You just can't have that many fabric shops everywhere in the world, right? And it's hard, it's expensive to get it there. Yeah, right, Mullen, exactly. Sometimes you just can't pass something up. Okay, so we have 
just these two pieces. That was the negative space created by the waistband. What do we think? Can we get, <laughs> maybe not. Hmm. But we could do that. Okay, so let's fold this one in half like this. Get four. Just trying to use it somewhat economically if I can. Do you think you'll ever shift away from spoon flower shim? Not a hundred percent, but like, do you ever look at fabric shop shops and look at other things? I know spoon flowers are super convenient when you need to like coordinate all that stuff, you know? And when you're sewing for four people, it's probably easier. I can spend a lot of time on the spoon flower site, but if I was doing what you were doing, it would be the same for me. I'd be like, oh, this is so much faster <laughs> because I've had to do that for chicken boots, you know, where I'm like, okay, we have to do this club for this fabric store, or <laughs> fabric, yarn store. Like we would do some, like a yarn crawl. They would say, hey, we want to do a yarn crawl and we want your bag to be our, our little item that we sell. And then... Sometimes they would let us pick the fabric out and I'd be like, all right, what's your theme of your yarn call? And then I would give them like options, <laughs> that kind of thing, or color schemes. It was so much faster because I had to buy a wholesale otherwise. And it, it like going to my wholesaler and going, oh, I need, I just want one bolt of this. They'd be like, come on. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. You know? But on Spoonflower, I can buy whatever I want. So it was really great that way. Hey, Mafia, how's it going? Oh, that, that's actually a really good idea. I never thought about secondhand stores for traveling for fabric. Let's just pull out a lot of this plastic. Am I right? I'm just gonna slide it out a little bit. Give myself a few yards that I don't have to deal with it. There you go. I'm already happier with that bolt. <laughs> Oakley doakley. Let's match up some things and interface them. <laughs> nope. So glad I spent all that time layering my bin. The other thing I've been trying to remember to do, Mafio, is look at places like secondhand places for flower pots and things. I just realized this weekend that I actually do have a hobby and it is container gardening. <laughs> I will admit, I just love it. Do, do, do. I, I need to interface the, the pocket opening, the um, pocket opening for the um, welt too. Maybe that's in the instructions to cut a piece of fabric for that. I mean, interfacing, sorry. I'm hungry, I'm really hungry right now. Doop, doop. Let's check it out. If there's not, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> Cause that will make it so your hole that you cut, it doesn't get too thready in the corners. 
some fabrics like this canvas is going to be hard to get a nice clean pocket opening without the thread sneaking out. I know the interfacing paint. Here we go. All right, I don't see one here, but we're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to just cut a one inch piece and I actually have some scraps here. Oh, why did I do white? Oh, cause I only have white, that's why. But I do have some, I do have some black for the, it's right here. I could do this for the khaki. Oh, this thing is really, it has a kind of a, gotten out of control. I don't like any of those pieces. I just keep those by my iron, you know, like little pieces that I cut off. Hey, Amy, how's it going? Tennis, nice. Oops. looking for this piece here. Watching, not playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you like your sports and I like that. Michael left on a trip yesterday and he was wearing his um um afc richmond <laughs> jersey shirt not yeah jersey shirt i was like yeah oh i need two more of these all right here we go this is kind of wide so we're just gonna cut this down to one inch We'll keep this little piece though. This, this, these things kind of come in handy and I don't like cutting them off my roll, you know? All right, so let's find out how long do we really want this? We want it to be, we're just gonna go a half inch past the opening. So six and a half inches. And I do it one inch wide. One. Two. Have I heard anything? No. He lands there today. He didn't fly away yesterday. He does get a factory tour of where he's going, though, so I'll tell you guys about that. I'm excited, and I'm like, I want to go. <laughs> Okay, let's iron some interfacing. These are for the backs. I put my bins together so nicely and then now I have torn them apart to do all this interfacing. One, two, three, four, backs, fronts. I don't need this. I might later though, I don't need this. I'm still here, I'm cutting two out. And it's an epic amount of interfacing. Sheesh. Sheesh, okay. Look at all this stuff I'm interfacing, holy moly. There are a lot of pieces. That's why we do all this prep. You wanna know why I'm fast? Cause I prep. I prep, prep, prep. I get everything done that I can. All right, so the, the ripstop has a more nubbly side that I'm gonna put on the right side, I think. I say that I can tell the difference, but maybe I won't be able to. Oof, it is tough already. Yep, 
You should go to bed. Yeah, come and sew with us tomorrow, Mullen. We're even batch ironing. <laughs> Maybe this would have been a good thing to block fuse, to be honest, you know? How's your new table, Shim, and your whole, like, ironing setup is it is it fully recovered I'm using Trico I use Trico for everything it works just gonna get all this to tack on here and then we'll iron it better you, oh, that's great. Yeah, exactly, Terry. Don't you feel like most of the work for any of our projects is this? Cutting, prep, fitting, <laughs> ironing, interfacing. The sewing is like the, such a small part of it. Let's just give these a little irony do, you know. So we're okay with this putty color top stitch for the khaki shorts. Oof. Unpi you're still unpicking. Oh no. I'm going to look at my um, thread over here, Sh show you guys what I got. I have a couple of browns and a black as well, but maybe, I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. I do not know about these at all. I do not like these things. I do not like these things. What about gray? I have like a few different grays. Oh, 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 oh. What about this? I don't have enough of this though, I don't think. Okay, this is kind of a greenish Oh, that's the winner, clearly. Like, it's kind of a greenish color. It'll work for the, the putty. I think that'll work for the putty. I think it'll definitely work for the... You would do what in a heartbeat? Mm, yeah, these are not okay. <laughs> hmm. It's so kind of amazing that when you walk over to your thread, how you can forget what color you're trying to <laughs> match. Putty on the khaki, but you like the greenish gray. I don't really have a putty. Um, the other thing is like the first few I brought over were actually good threads for top stitching, 
This is just Tex 40, so that's it's a little heavier. I could do two strands, you know, so that would be helpful. I don't actually have a lot of choices. It seems like I do, but you know how thread is. Look how wrinkly this is. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> and my thread behind me is not enough. It's like I'm not even going to look at it and fall in love with something because it's just, those are all small spools. Plus we got to overlock. What are we going to do for overlock thread? Hmm. What did I do for overlock thread? My eye goes straight to this, but I only have four spools of it. But I could do two in the looper and two in the, the needles of something else. I could just do three thread overlock and then I'd only be missing one of these. Right? And use two or... I could wind a few bob. That's what I'll do. I'll wind a few bobbins, and then that way um, I don't need two spools when I'm sewing on my. Um, see you, Diane. When I'm sewing on my um, industrial, I could just use one spool. Yeah, that's what I'll do, and I'll use the other three on the overlock. Okay, we sorted that out. Thank you. Thank you. I was a little worried about that. Okay, these right here are interfaced, but these, I think I need a little more help on. It's got a little bit wonky. A little bit wonky. <laughs> Why does that look like it doesn't even match? <laughs> We know I cut them out, though. <laughs> Look at how bad that is. You know what? I may have just done one of these upside down. Let's see. I'm going to have to recut this piece. Yeah, look. Yeah, so I need to recut this one. Good to know. That's, I thought I kept track. You saw me keeping track when I was laying my pieces down, but not good enough. See, you need a left and a right. And I had um, kind of missed it. Oh, I only have two of these. Actually, I'm only going to do them on the, the ripstop anyway. I don't think I need to do it on the canvas. Let's just give this a little irony do. There we go. Man, look at all the lint getting on this these things. Turn down a little the interface or the non, the non interfaced. Your under collar is the one that's smaller because you want to pull the top collar to the underside. So we make it a little smaller. Should I do snaps? We like snaps. I have a lot of snaps. Do 
Did, did, doesn't your pattern, does your pattern not come with it? Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, that's right. That's the Gilbert, right, Eliza? It doesn't have an under collar. Yeah, trim, trim it down a little bit. It'll look nicer. Um, the cargo pockets. These, these flaps here. I'll probably do a one on the waist. The snaps I have right now are strong enough to be a waist snap too. So then they'll all three match. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of prep. You guys are, you do not have to stick around for all this prep, but if you don't, um, it will look like I had done a lot off camera. <laughs> Just gonna warn you. <laughs> so this is the pocket opening. So I'm just gonna center this over that pocket opening. <laughs> Stay. Yeah, I've had some bad experiences with waist, waist snaps, that's for sure, you know. But currently, the, the ones I got in that box are strong enough to be a waist snap. Whereas my old ones, they were not. <laughs> so every time I um, squat, my pants come undone. And it's really annoying. So like I said, this is one inch by six and a half inches. I like to go like a half inch past the opening. This will be covered up by our whole pocket over it. So you won't see this. I know it's kind of ugly, but we won't see it. Ah, shoot. Let's get another piece. See, this is why this is really handy to have this, but you saw me already pick through this. This will work. Where's that piece that I just mangled? Look at this, it's like a one inch piece. This is exactly why I keep these little pieces is for pocket openings or maybe sometimes I'll do it to reinforce like a V neck, you know, or something. Um, I use spring snaps. There is probably a proper snap though, Shem, and I may not be using it. I do not know. I am not a snap expert. So yeah, don't, don't, uh, listen to what I say. Does this really just go here? Why? Why does this stop here? Why does this stop here? <laughs> I don't like that. I want interfacing where my, my button buttonhole goes. Okay, I'm gonna look into this. This is the pattern piece. Um, okay, that's my only thing I didn't interface here. Go back over. Do I? I don't think I have a snap tutorial. I've recorded, I think, two of them, and they're and I feel like people won't watch them. They're too long. You know, ten minutes is just too long. <laughs> I I know I've recorded two snap tutorials. <laughs> Okay, so this piece needs um, interfacing. I need to cut this whole waist out because it's got a little bit of residue, so. Is it really? That's what I was wondering too because you just see that little point, it looked a little funny. 
Hmm. Nope, she shows it lower than the waist. I wonder why that is. Because this pattern probably only has 3 8 inch seam, so it's not like that's a 5 8 inch seam allowance up there. You did, Amy? Oh, no. <laughs> that's not good. And was it a long, was it 8 minutes? <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering, but isn't the seam, all the seam allowances are like 3 8 on this pattern, right? Hmm. Should I just trust it? Do I ever trust it? Yeah, see Amy? <laughs> it's too long and you didn't get anything from it. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm just gonna do it because I've cut the pieces, but I don't know. We'll do it real quick. I can always add a little piece there if I feel like I really need it. Okay, let's peel it back again. I just in general don't like when it does this little doohickey thing, but okay. Oh shoot, I didn't turn the computer, I can't see the chat. Okay, the only thing I need to do, right, is um, I have to recut that waistband. To recut that waistband, I need to make sure everything's marked because I, I um, think I forgot a couple of markings. And now we're going to reorient everything in the box. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was thinking, Mafio. But the button, the this is the top layer on the outside. So you would think you'd want the interfacing, like that's really all you, you usually put the interfacing on is the top layer. So I don't know. All right, so let's put all these away. I'll do a little uh, snap tutorial tomorrow, tomorrow, Amy, probably. So, all right. Now we're gonna nest all this together so that we can batch sew. Because I have only done this twice, let's do it one more time. Okay. Okay. Um, whatever this thing is called. I'm totally spacing it. Carriers. What are these called? Bell loops. <laughs> Bell loops. Okay, next is the flaps, pocket flaps. Cargo pockets. Make sure they're all marked. Make sure you have your snaps marked. Nice, Shim, that's cool. Pockets, pocketses, pocketses. We have these pocket facings for what they call the, the large pocket, which is the under pocket. Um, and then the top pocket's the one with the angle. So we're gonna keep This is how this goes, right? The putty goes with the menu, right? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Putty goes with the menu. And then, yes, exactly, here we go. Now, where's this one, two? Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. And then our fronts. Butt patch, if you are doing it. And now we put all of our welt pocket hoo-ha together. Um, and let's put the back, other back there if you don't do a butt, po butt patch. And then that just leaves the zipper fly and the waist facing. Cool. So now our bin's ready to sew two pairs at the same time. I flipped it over. We have our pocket template, our zippers, our instructions, and our snap. What do we think here? We have black, silver, or copper. <laughs> what do you think, silver or black on the khaki? Copper for the green, uh oh. Ooh. What do you, do you think you'd like that? I love it. Oh, nice, Amy. You ready to do your, your bobbin elastic? That's exciting. Black. Let's see, here's the, here's the black. <laughs> Here, I'll do the bigger snap so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see. Sorry, it's so dark. The lighting at the sewing machine is better. And let's look at silver. I'm kind of leaning towards silver on both. I'd probably do the smaller one for the pocket though. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking, Amy. Hmm. Oh, okay, Amy, that happens. <laughs> well, that sticks out too much, huh? Hmm. Oh, I've already got my little thing out here. Oh, I do have, Oh, well, there's five in there though. I'll save those. I have these, these are kind of nicer. They're a little more, have a little more style. See how this one looks is it's a flat, kind of a matte finish. It's more of an antique compared to this. This is a little more mainstream, old school silver. But I only have five, and I feel if I use three of them, it leaves two, and that's kind of an awkward amount. Well, it could be, I don't know. Five could also be a shirt, so I think, or a jacket, so that's why I think I'm gonna save those. And then there's only two, or one in here? One in, there's two in here of this. This is an, a more of an antique copper. Only have one. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. I, some do though. Let's be honest here. <laughs> How's it going, Anthony? Nice to see you. 
<laughs> My thing was in the like, was it the 2000s when um, the fly of pants got super decorated? And some of them, you just like, you would see someone walk and you'd immediately look at, you could see it out of the corner of your eye and you would look and I'd be like, why did I just look there? <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm glad that trend is kind of a little more subdued now. I like the silver on here. I'm not sure I like the silver or the black on the khaki though. I mean, God, the olive green. You know, let's just think about it now because we have to do the snaps early on. So you kind of, you need to kind of force yourself to make these decisions early on. Otherwise you'll end up with pockets with nothing on them. I have tack buttons too. So I have tack buttons and I could do a buttonhole, right? As far as tack buttons go, I don't have many options. I have silver and um, I don't know what you would call this. So silver and then I have a, a brushed silver. Yeah, exactly, Terry, right? You know why. Because <laughs> contrary to what Anthony says, <laughs> um, hmm. My mom gave me these antique buttons a long time ago and they smelled weird. I've used those buttons. They don't smell weird anymore, but my button box still smells weird. The brushed silver tack button. I only have two though. I shouldn't have offered it. I have a large one and a small one. Hmm. What if I did magnetic snaps that you don't see? They're kind of huge. Do I want magnetic snaps though? They'll grab the laundry machine. But I could do magnetic snaps on one pair of pockets and then just do like maybe a tack button at the waist. No, no magnetic, okay. Yeah, I feel like that'd be annoying. Look at these beautiful buttons. Oh clear green. Oh, you can't really see them, but oh. oh, I buy green everything. <laughs> yeah, right, Terry? I know it is a little ton of order. Do you mean on tack buttons? But look at how many I have. I have a, well, you, do you know how many I had before? It was crazy. I saved some cool hardware off of some of Maggie's things like this. Ouch, that hurt, dang, thing snapped me. There's a lot of these were on her, were on her fur coats. Key cell phones, yeah. Snaps are just so convenient. Maybe the black will look, yeah, good once I get used to it. Okay, we'll just, we'll stick with that. All right, so let's, let's get our snaps all ready to go. We're gonna do one big waist and two smaller. This comes in two sizes. So we'll do that on the putty and that. And so now we need six of these. Six of these. And six of these. Two, three, four, five, okay. And what we'll do is we'll just grab this thing. We'll leave you, and you, and you, and you, and you. 
you need you need an anvil both sides I have the tape so I know that these go together that's why it's on there you need um, this piece that has this little divot and you need this piece that has this little like sharper thing so those uh, you need look at remember I told you guys I made a big old boo-boo can you see the boo-boo so you see this thing I grabbed this thinking it was this whack whack this is a die it cuts a hole I permanently almost had this a part of my garment with the snap it took me so long and it's still in there I cannot get it out <laughs> so don't do that all right and we need these so we have our snaps our hammer put all this away And I'll recut this. You don't have to watch that. And we're ready to go. So the, um, you know how, uh, like when you put, when you put um, this, this one, the female side to the cap, right? This one, right? So you put it like this, right? And then you put this in here, whack! And instead I used the die to cut the hole for the snap. Cause it just is so similar, even though it's black, I just mistook it for this. I just grabbed it cause it was the skinny one and I just wasn't thinking. I never use that to cut the hole either. I usually use, my screw punch, which I also need here. So yeah, so that basically is what you see inside my die. It's the post of this. See that post? That little post is inside the die. And I don't know if it's recoverable or not. This is actually a little, nice little important thing I put on here to protect the cap of my snap. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're ready. I'm gonna recut this and then um, I'm excited to make these. I have enough fabric. Oh, and then just in case you're joining us and you're into menswear, this is what I'm making later in the month. Merchant and Mills Arbor. I'm just doing this chambray here, but you could do flannel, you could do something heavy and make it kind of a um, overcoat type of thing or a chore coat, maybe a heavy corduroy. So if you want to join me on that, that is in two weeks from today, I'll be cutting it. And that's it. We're ready. That's kind of a long one. I'm streamed way longer than I usually do for cutting. So we'll probably, this will probably be some longer streams because I'm going to be sewing too. Um, so if you want to join me, please do. You have time to cut out a pair and, and even if you cut out and got caught up on your sewing from tomorrow, by the end of Friday, we could sew together on Saturday and finish them. So, yeah, I think so too, Terry. I think it's a really cool looking thing. It doesn't have vents at the sides, which is interesting. And then it's got a two-piece sleeve that goes down into the cuff, see, into the placket. We, I've, not, I've not done one of those, I don't think, on my channel. So that's something new. Yeah. You could do it in denim as well. Workwear inspired. Canvas would be good. It goes from, like, do you guys want neck or chest sizes? So chest 34 inch to 54 inch or 14 inch neck to 19 and a half. So denim, that would be really cool. Green denim, right? <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be sewing our cargo shorts by Wardrobe by Me. 
you'd add vent. I, that's, it does look a little odd without the vents, Anthony. I, I've been, I was wondering about that, but it also, I kind of like how old school it kind of looks without it. Can, can, can you imagine it in like a railroad denim without the vents? It would look kind of old school. I love that. No way they're getting my green denim. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Me and Terry have this amazing green denim. Look at it. You will see us wherever we go when we wear our amazing green denim. <laughs> All right, you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for helping me figure out a few things and decide a few things and um, sticking around. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Whoops.